All right, we have another game of what am I being that uh, what am I is one of the only undefeateds right now in the tournament going up against Care Philo here. Uh, so let's see if what am I is able to go ahead and continue this undefeated streak with this lineup. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into game one of round four of OLS 12. Carefilo, we are running with, tr okay, we have Ramp Asol with Augur of the Old Ones. I like it. Very excited to see this. We are getting into the game, so I'll head on over. We also have Draven Jinx discard. And, and Shen Fiora. And sh is it Shen Fiora? Yeah. Yeah, Shen Fiora. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay, so two different decks. Well, Barrier, not really different per se, but it is different from what we've been seeing today. Looks like we are starting, though, with... Good old Discord Argo. We have ourselves Raka Kench, everybody. Let's go. Looks like he was debating mulliganing the Star Spring. I guess that doesn't sound like the most unreasonable thing in the world. You know, you are against the discard aggro. They're looking to go as wide as possible really early. You just need to find those early game units because, yeah, we already see a Poro cannon to start things off just as aggressively as possible on the side of Carefilo. Luckily, you do have a hired gun to actually go ahead and just kill this straight away. You can then get down that Star Spring on the following turn, then start to build your life total back up with the bear back, broad back, broke back protector. <laughs> I do, I do like that name. I'm not gonna lie. Bro, I think it's funny. Broke back protector, baby. Did if I if I've seen this right, Carefilo just discarded two Dravens to start off his first two turns. Um, I believe so, and that is not good. Um, unless I don't know, is there any way to rationalize discarding Draven? Like, is it is it bogging down your hand at all? Or I mean, there is. Dra yeah, you figured Draven right, number three is coming on. Okay, It'd yeah. be really wild if you discarded the first two and then had a really weak turn three play. Yeah, I guess just not valuing Whirling Death at all in this matchup and deciding that the Draven's never going to die. So that's not something I can realistically play towards. But now we're going to get to see the Star Spring Bear Breck combo alongside this Astral Protection <laughs> to go ahead and continue to buff that one up. And I think that. I mean, this is an okay start on the side of Carefilo, but this is really not as much damage as you wanted to be pushing through for how lax the first few turns have been. Listen, Boulevard, we gotta make it. We gotta make a decision. Is it broad back, broke back, bare back? Like, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say all of them. If I say be back protector, you better know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh man, box the puss. Let's go. I love. I I gotta say, this deck and all the cards that it plays is just great. I love all the names. I think I think they meant to do that with Tom Kench too. I wonder if they actually planned all the weird card names to come with Tom Kench. But we do have a box to push wild in the hand of what am I? We'll see if it does get played here uh, in response to this crowd favorite. I mean, this is such a hard deck to to beat. I think uh, from the aggro player's perspective, I mean, we already have this uh, this broadback protector here healing every single turn i imagine we're gonna just have it block and heal watch, up as well watch so hush. watch this hush onto the onto the the crowd favorite, crowd this, favorite. this is about to be devastating <laughs> <laughs> well there's hush and we even have the astral protection that we could play on the broad back to uh to block something like it just okay well now it's probably gonna get pulled so that feels bad um but i mean it's still just a, a really good spot for for what am i like, like all this aggression coming out from Carefilo, and usually I'd be like, oh man, he's going wide. There's going to be so much damage coming down. Well, let me tell you. Uh, he is pushing mm -hmm. 10 damage. Yeah, it's but this, this is going to be a hush. Then we're going to yeah. we have so much heal. Like, it's not. We have star shaping and guiding touch. Like, I think that hush and astral protection onto the broke back is probably going to be the play for the turn. Just to get that to survive, get an extra three heal at the start of the round. Our turn is probably just going to be a star shaping onto something. I do think we need to find Soraka relatively soon, though, just in order to, if for no other reason, to start getting our broadback healed up in meaningful ways other than just using this Astral Projection back-to-back. -back. But, I mean, the wow. level Draven, it doesn't even feel like a problem because we know that there are no Whirling Deaths in Carefilo's deck because he discarded his other two Dravens already, and it doesn't look like he has any refuel unless that last card is a Augmented Experimenter, which I could honestly see it being. 
Yeah, augmented experimenter, Ooh. so good as oh. refuel. Oh. Oh, never mind. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I forgot the... about how the star spring was gonna work. Mm -hmm. I thought that the broadback was actually gonna die here, but uh, uh, what am I? Has that ordering down, whereas I do not. Yeah, I think this deck, it just has so much heal. We have two more Astro Protections in hand. We can still heal up this Broadback Protector to do even more heal to the face. We have, oh my god, we have Star Shaping and got two Guiding Touch. Now, like, like this is, the hand, this is the hand that basically says, do as much damage as you want. I don't care. I'm going to heal it all back. Yeah, I mean, now he gets the Guiding Touch onto the box to push. Rest of the turn, you get the Broadback with the astral protection and honestly this star spring is about to be online as a realistic win condition very soon here yeah star spring is definitely uh i mean it's scary right when you're going up against tom Ken soraka you know that there's going to be issues when you do start seeing all these damaged units on their side of the field that is that is what you need to avoid and that's the other thing with astral protection too it suddenly Gives you this Star Spring win condition so fast. I mean, that is that's four in one card. Look, we're at fifteen. We got one more what turn. Is, is we're it probably twenty two or twenty seven? Twenty two, or not twenty seven? I was thinking twenty three. Okay, yeah, twenty two. That's what I thought. So, like, we we just we just win now. Oh no, we don't win now because we don't have anything that's damaged enough to get five heal off the star shaping. Um, oh no, we don't win like this. I probably the start of the next turn. Well, I mean, we could win this turn uh, depending on how the blocks go. Oh, well, here we go. Here's the all-in. It, 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 like, look how ridiculous Carefilo... Like, look at this ridiculous damage. Two straight turns from Carefilo. And it literally means nothing. It means nothing because of Soraka Top Catch. And now, I mean, yeah, that is another four... So, uh, yeah, I believe that this Star Spring does actually just end the game next turn. We There's no way that you're able to finish off this Broadback, not at 8 HP. There's no way that you can push through the last 7 of the amount of damage. And then, yeah, the Star Shaping should just be lethal. And I'm excited because I have, as I had mentioned, I've never lost to this deck. What does that mean? It means I have no idea what the Star Spring win animation looks like. I've never seen it before. Wait, really? I'm excited. If you play the tutorial, it shows you. <laughs> The there's, tutor what tutorial? There's, there's literally so as they've added sets i know i just discovered this actually like last week God. as as they've added sets they actually add like a tutorial on different things so they added a landmark tutorial and it has the star it has you win with star spring he surrendered i still don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh man so it looks like we are gonna get a win there with the rock of tom We'll see if we're able to pick up another one with this uh, discard aggro now, which is what we just beat. So we might just get a mirror match. And that is indeed a mirror match. Oh, boy. I don't know what it looks like still. I'm in distress. All right, this this bothers me. Why why was Carfilo's Jinx Draven and what am I's was Draven Jinx? uh because of the order they were put in the deck i think that's dumb yeah like if you put the jinx in first it shows up yeah so because i know i think it was decks of rune terra where like i was looking at two of the same deck and then like one of them had like the noxus and bilgewater symbol flipped over the other one and i was like how does that even happen all right here we go no one drop out of what am i the one drop out of carefilo so that is just going to be carefilo picking up game number two tying up the series excited for game number three the game is over you can't come back from your opponent having a one drop and you not having one and of course that is just the way the card games work and we all know that we can go ahead and move on from here <laughs> and all right so we are going to get the attack with uh with carefilo now all right i want to get some input from you on this as well because i i think yeah, there's up? there's a lot of arguments as to how to play certain matchups, and especially when you have a double burn or double aggro matchup like this. Yeah. In your opinion, when you're going out, if you're the burn player and you're going against a burn player, how are you looking to play this matchup as a burn player? If I'm on the back foot, like what am I seems to be here? To, I mean, it's obviously very hand dependent, but given the fact that I have two jinx, I feel like I'm fine taking the early trades because i don't think that i need to be as aggressive i think that i do just get down this jinx and that's the win con that i have over you um and i can play this one a little bit slower especially because like my hand doesn't really 
pair up to try and race you in the early game. I'd rather try to take the board considerations where I can. And now we even have the get excited for your Draven. So I, I think on the side of Carefilo, this is a situation where I would expend resources to kill the Jinx as well. Uh, I do think that this this matchup specifically is a little bit more board centric than you might think. It's not often that you're seeing one player race the other one because there's not a lot of keywords coming out in this matchup. Not a lot of fearsome, elusive, overwhelm, anything like that. Well, we'll see how both players decide they want to go ahead and go about it in this game. I just think it's always interesting, especially with mirror matches. I feel like there's a lot of arguments to be made as to you know different ways to play in the mirror match. And uh, right now, I mean, Carefilo going the route of sticking a lot of units to the board going wide. I got to say, I think Carefilo is in a pretty good position right now uh, in comparison to what am I. We do have to get excited to possibly kill this Draven. It looks like we yeah. are going to go ahead and throw that out there. And I think that what am i was actually playing around vision there because i was i was kind of wondering you know why don't you throw out this get excited pre-combat you know get down the jury rig have it as a blocker for the zonite urchin or at least push one damage onto this jury rig but instead the vision does come out and now it's a one two rig i mean uh you know not jury rig scrap scuttler is that the word that's not it uh wait what yeah this the, the the one one that summoned no the zero two Oh, Flame Chompers. Flame Chompers, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I've got Scrap Scuttler on my mind. It's, it's on the, the field. comes out of Jury Rig. <laughs> yeah, it is. I always yeah. call it the Jury Rig. Anyway, yeah, so this, the, oh, man. The Flame Chompers is going to have one attack. That's why he didn't throw this out free combat. Didn't want to just lose that unit for free. Well, we are going in with the Jinx now, and we have... I was worried that that was another Get Excited. Yeah. Only a Jury Rig in return, so we will get the trade here. Uh, and, I mean, I don't know. This is a very close game. I, I got to say, I mean, obviously, what am I seems to have the advantage with the Jinx on board. If Carefilo wasn't holding the Jinx back, then I think that Carefilo is just going to run out of gas. I think what am I is in a, a much better spot here. They're, wow, okay, the top deck Jinx feels really good, and this feels yeah. really bad. Better hope that that is a castable spell for Carefilo, and honestly, yep. there's not a lot of them when you wow. have zero cards in hand. That is, that's going to be game. I don't see what am I not taking this after this augmented experimenter. That feels really bad to uh, to not be able to respond with a level jinx there. And we even have a vision, uh, which we can't play this turn, which I guess is okay. But uh, I mean, it, it could be another jinx in Carefilo's hand. That could be the last card. Okay. Or maybe it's an experimenter, and now we're setting up for this with. I mean, I would imagine that the flame chompers going at the jinx means that we do have either get excited or augmented experimenter as our last card mm -hmm. but now we see the Farron on the side of what am i who can't get down to zero cards in hand this turn to get the rocket but you know we are on turn seven and it does feel weird that he's never actually going to get value out of this jinx but the Farron should be enough to clean up the game anyway and yeah i i, I gotta agree um this Farron man having this addition to the deck so freaking good it just closes out so many games you don't even... I mean, even if he didn't have the Farron right now, what am I? I don't think really needs it at this point. Uh, we're in a pretty good spot. But, man, Farron, so good. And here's the Vision. And this is going to be a big old attack. Now, most of these will get Chump Locked down, I think. So, I think that's why he's pulling back the 2-1 Spiderling here, just because it can get Chump Locked by the Augmented Experimenter. That's just a bad trade in general for what am I. So, good on him pulling that back. Doesn't look like Carefilo really wants to offer up the trade but does end up doing it and yeah this is looking really terrible for carefilo now carefilo is also running captain farron if i'm right uh no carefilo not running the captain farron so you say that like it's surprising like this is normal <laughs> well well now it to me now it's normal to literally like now that i've seen it played i'm like wow why hasn't this been played in discord even as a one i don't necessarily agree with it being a two of uh maybe what am i is just needing it a little bit more consistently in some of you know lisa matchups and stuff like that or, or whatever mid-range frostbite even maybe um but I don't know. I'm liking it. I am liking it so far as I've seen it played today. And it is doing work because right now this is going to be basically the rest of the damage. Because without this Farron, unless this was a Jinx, otherwise that would be a whole other story. Let's say it's any other random utility card in the deck. It's not going to be closing out the game. It's just going to keep going this back and forth of like trading and doing a little bit of damage and trading. And that's usually what this matchup is unless you draw one of your quote unquote power cards like Jinx. Um, this Captain Farron completely blows us out of the water. 
Look, look at this crowd favorite. Look at this little dummy. <laughs> Four attack has nothing. Wow. Yeah, this is this might just close it out this turn. Just with the, Ooh, the yeah, that jury yeah. rig is nothing. Nope. And looks so, like yeah, now you get to clear out just about everything as well as push you know a butt ton of damage with this Farron, and you still have the mana to get off a of decimate. I don't know if you kill your opponent this turn exactly. You yeah. might have to wait until the next one, but I mean this is all but over. Wait, nine, six, seven, eight. Actually, this might still be... Okay, no. I no. thought it might be exactly lethal, but... We're four off. So we'll, our opponent will have a chance to play a single card. <laughs> single card. And we will All see right. if it does 13 damage. <laughs> yeah, it's Thermo Beam for face. That exists in Holtover's uh, on, right? I, I hope so. <laughs> for Carefilo's sake, I hope so. Oh, man. And here we go. Looks like... This is it. The moment has... There's a... Because oh why the hell not? Oh, why did you let him play the other Farron? Oh, oh, he didn't let him Star Spring, didn't let him play Farron number two. And uh, what am I? Going to advance to a sweet, sweet, sweet 4-0 and oh there. All right, what am I? Still undefeated here going into round five. So we'll see uh, what the last undefeated matchup is going to be for round five. Pretty excited. We'll see if what am I is able to take home two tournament wins in a row. But as always, everybody stay healthy, stay positive. I hope shit just works for you. Peace out.